Junkanoo officials will use the smartphone system again for the New Year's Day parade. It does so many things for you. A spike in tourism this New Year's holiday. Stem cell therapy could bring millions of dollars to the country. And there are many countries in the world that have embraced uh, medical tourism. Plus, we'll tell you about the 300 Connect program. To connect as many young people as possible to positive things with positive people in positive places. I'm Nakia DeVoe and this is NB12 Weekend. for joining us this Saturday for NB12's Weekend Edition. Although the new digital scoring system had to be scrapped at the start of the Boxing Day Junkanoo Parade and sparked a dispute, Junkanoo Corporation Chairman Silbert Ferguson says the digital scoring system will be used in the upcoming New Year's Day Parade. Celeste Nixon has this report. Ferguson confirmed the new smartphone tallying system will be used in the upcoming New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade alongside the old manual system of scoring. As the old scoring system was in place from the start, Ferguson said as soon as discrepancies were noticed in the smartphone tallying system, Junkanoo Marshals ordered judges to switch to manual scoring. It does so many things for you because it tells you when a score is placed. Uh, you know, if a group uh, gets out at 12 o'clock, uh, uh, like the Saxons did, uh, the GPS has the Saxons as well. Mm -hmm. And so if the Saxons are completed at 120, you know, and scores are going in at 2 mm -hmm. o'clock, you know that... So it's to do with accountability? Yes, and accountability. Yeah, we just, okay. we want, uh, you know, my responsibility as the chairman is, I have responsibility to our John Canoe groups mm -hmm. and the show that they put on. Mm -hmm. And, and so I want to make sure that we do everything that is uh, that is necessary and possible, uh, you know, to make our parades good. Ferguson said the digital system was tested 12 times beginning in June, and Boxing Day, when the Saxon superstars hit Zone One, was the first sign of errors. According to Ferguson, several judges were found, for whichever reason, scoring outside their designated judging zones. The system was attached with the GPS. He also noted there was at least one instance where a judge awarded a score to the eventual winners, the Valley Boys, hours before they rushed Bay Street. Ferguson said all of these issues would be addressed in time for New Year's Day Junkanoo. First of all, uh, as we um, told our public that we were going to be introducing a new smartphone system, uh, which we did, uh, at the same time, we also said that we would be running the smartphone system parallel to the old scoring system. It, it was the right decision, and so that parade uh, was not in jeopardy at no time. We just wanted uh, the public to be advised that the integrity of the scoring uh, was intact, uh, the integrity of our tally room was intact. Okay, at no time were any of the scores from the smartphone used. Following speculation that the scoring of the Boxing Day Junkanoo Parade was compromised, Junkanoo Corporation President Silbert Ferguson reassured the public that the official results are accurate. Uh, our judges have a very difficult job, um, and, and it's not an easy job uh, on the road, um, and they have to make snap decisions. And, you know, I want to applaud them, even though uh, judges were on the GPS scene out of range, mm -hmm. okay, uh, whether by accident or intentional, you know, we will make all the necessary adjustments to make sure we clear up that position. For Ferguson said Boxing Day Junkanoo was a successful parade and they're expecting the same for New Year's Day. Reporting for MB12, I'm Celeste Nixon. Looking to the future, the Junkanoo Corporation president said cultural tourism is the way forward for the iconic National Festival. Ferguson suggested the construction of a Junkanoo village as a way to not only expand and showcase Junkanoo, but also to accommodate the increasing number of participants and supporters. Cultural tourism is something that is going to come to play, mm -hmm. uh, and we totally agree uh, with the minister uh, that this is the direction that we are going to head in. I think that uh, we have to designate a Junkanoo village mm -hmm. uh, that we should uh, start to discuss and uh, you know, we should start to work on you know, to, to make sure that we, that we create a home for ourselves. You know, if we are the number one 
uh, national cultural festival uh, of the Bahamas, uh, I think we ought to treat it that way. At Rawson Square during the Boxing Day John Canoe Parade, Prime Minister Perry Christie said he would like John Canoe as an incredible symbol of Bahamian culture to be promoted on an international level and make a larger contribution to the Bahamian economy. I want to be able to see a greater impact on the economy from John Canoe. I want to see this becoming a, a, such a, an attraction. Thousands of people will fly in to the Bahamas and you won't be able to accommodate them but the way we're doing it now. Christie noted the challenges moving forward and said there may be a possibility of moving the parade to a larger venue. Why that is so, it's because more and more people want to be active participants and you'll find the groups are becoming larger. You know, instead of being a group of three, four hundred people, it's now near a thousand, fifteen hundred people in a particular group. Um, more groups are coming out more sort of what I call folk groups like Sting and Paper Boys and, and um, the Pigs um, are getting involved. Um, and so the question is, how can you really continue to have a jungle parade with the composition as it is, with the amount of groups as they are, um, and finish before 3, 4 o'clock the next day? Both Christie and Ferguson agreed relocating the parade could only be done through various consultations with all stakeholders. The advancement of, of moving the parade from Bay Street uh, is going to take all of the stakeholders involved to make that decision. Um, because, so there you know, is a possibility? Well, there is a possibility after a discussion mm -hmm. uh, because the John Canoes have to also be comfortable with that position. Right. Okay? Um, because you cannot move the John Canoe into an arena that is designated for sports. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's a total insult. Mm -hmm. And speaking of tourism, the numbers are looking good this New Year's holiday, with two major hotels in Nassau reporting high occupancy numbers. Despite weather concerns coming from the northeastern United States, executives at Atlantis Resort and Sandals Royal Bahamian say both properties are running at 100% occupancy for the holiday. According to Kersner International Senior Vice President of Public Affairs Ed Fields, December 26th to January 1st is a traditionally full sold-out period for the resort. General Manager of the Sandals Resort on Cable Beach, Patrick Drake, says the numbers represent a stronger showing than the resort has seen in the last three years. He credits the numbers to strong marketing and promotion of the resort's Bahamian properties. But both resorts are seeing soft occupancy levels for January. Fields and Drake say this is a traditionally slow period for most hotels in the capital.